Good morning, everyone. My name is Angie Colina McNeil. I am the pastor here at Country Club United Methodist Church. We are located in Kansas City, Missouri, and we are south of the Country Club Plaza from where we get our name. And we are north of Brookside right here in Kansas City. And so I welcome you this morning to our second day second time together for teach us to pray which is a small group experience and we are learning different types of prayers now if you are not a part of country club united methodist church and um or if you are you might know that right now in worship we are walking through the lord's prayer in our sermon series called teach us to pray so each week we are diving into one or two verses of the lord's prayer and really figuring out what it means for us what it meant when jesus taught his disciples this prayer and why it's so important for us to to know the lord's prayer so one of the things that we're doing while we are doing this worship series is on Wednesday mornings at 10 o'clock, we are doing a small group experience where we're learning different types of prayer. So last week, if you tuned in, we learned about the ACTS model of prayer. ACTS is an acronym, A-C-T-S, and it stands for Adoration, Confession, Thanksgiving, and Supplication. Supplication meaning making your petitions or your request from God. And so we, what the Acts prayer does is that you go through and you call out all those things about God that you adore, why God is above all things. And then you move into a time of confession, confessing your sins before the Lord. Now, this isn't just a time to confess and be done with it. It's a time to confess and to ask the Lord God, ask Jesus Christ to help you uphold all the things that you want to do right, to align your lives with God. And then comes a time of thanksgiving. And thanksgiving is, is not just thanking God for all the blessings we have, which is really important to do, and that is a part of it, but it's to thank God for this, this his, God's willingness to forgive us, or God's willingness to stand with us, stand beside us, walk with us, even when we misstep, when we miss the mark, when we make mistakes. And then supplication is that time of petition, coming to the Lord and putting it all at the Lord's feet, asking God for healing mercies for friends or family, asking the Lord to help mend a broken relationship, all those types of things. So last week was Acts, and you can, of course, go back on our website or look this up on Facebook or IGTV, and we have that whole study for you there. Now, today we're going to do two different types of prayers. We're going to learn two prayers. First one are our body prayers, and the other one are breath prayers. I'm going to do breath prayers last because I particularly like doing breath prayers. They're probably one of my favorite ones uh, right next to doing uh, uh, prayer walks. I do quite a bit of those, and I'm going to talk about those in the body prayers. So let's start with body prayers. So what are body prayers? So one of the things that we know is that we have bodies. If you look at yourself, you can see that you have a body. Now you might get all philosophical and wonder, ooh, do I really have a body? But for our purposes, we are going to say we have bodies. We all are embodied creatures. And as Christians, we proclaim the goodness of creation. And as part of creation are the creation of human bodies. And there's the creation of the physical world of which we are a part. So when God looked at all that God had created, God said it was all very good. Said even our bodies are very good. God affirmed this goodness of creation with this gift, this gift of the body. And then furthermore, as we know through Jesus Christ, he became incarnate. He, he took on flesh and became one of us. He walked with us. God embodied human flesh. Now, what's more is that Jesus, when he was resurrected, he didn't leave his body behind. If you read the text, if you read the scriptures and all four of the gospels, you see that the tomb was empty. It's not like Jesus' body was left there and just his soul had gone into heaven. He was resurrected body and spirit. And sometimes 
we forget that. And so we think, oh, well, you know, this is all temporary. So therefore I'm going to just think about heaven and not really take care of this body. But that that's not really how we think of it. Our bodies matter. We believe that when we die and when we're resurrected, we're not just resurrected in spirit, we are resurrected body and spirit. Now that might be a little difficult to wrap your heads around. I get that. It's like, it's not like you could go to a cemetery and bring somebody up and their body's no longer there. We know that's not the case, but this is a recognition that God's world is different than ours. We see glimpses of God's world, of God's kingdom among us, but we're not fully present within it. We are between heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ, the kingdom of God has come near. So we do in our physical world, we, we get to see the kingdom of heaven every once in a while. So don't go pulling up bodies from graveyards. That's not something that I would recommend. Um, you will find bodies in there. But in God's world, body and spirit are resurrected. So we are physical bodies. We have spiritual bodies. So we don't just pray with our words and our minds. We pray with the fullness of our bodies. What we do with our bodies during prayer is a part of the prayer. And you can pray any kind of prayer for in any position, but some prayer positions fit better with certain types of prayers. So yeah, so your body can do different things. There's sitting, standing, all these different ways of, of praying. So I want you to remember that. So here's an example. So we can pray through worship. So you might go to worship sometimes and you'll see people raising their, their hands in worship or both hands, you know, or they're silently looking down and holding the words within their hearts. Um, this is a type of a body prayer because prayer is a part of worship. So, um, so that's that's one way to look at this. When you see people in worship who are, are raising their hands, it's a way of using our bodies to express love and adoration for, for our God in heaven. So what do we do for body prayer? So we move through, we're going to move through a couple of, uh, let me see, is it four or five? I can't remember. It's four or five uh, different positions to feel them, what they feel like. And at each one, I'm going to invite you to pause this and you can stay as long as you would like. And you could you can pray a prayer that feels right for you to pray. Now, if you are watching this on our website, one of the things that you'll need to do is actually click on the, on the video to get you to YouTube. That's where you can pause this video. So first, body prayer, sitting. Sitting is the most common prayer position for our culture. Sitting is a posture that emphasizes rest and it emphasizes and symbolizes being at rest with God. We sit peacefully in God's presence. So every Sunday when we do a past, when I do a pastoral prayer, somebody does a congregational prayer, most of the time people are sitting and they are communing with God, letting the person who is praying lead them through prayer. Now there are several positions that you can take when you are in prayer. One is with your, your head bowed. Sometimes you'll hear people say, would you please bow your heads? Now, bowing is a sign of worship. It's a sign of reverence. So we hear in Psalm 95, 6, come, let us worship and bow down. So bowing is that sign of coming humbly before the Lord. The other position that you could have is you can look to heaven. We know from John 17, when he's praying for his disciples, John clearly says that Jesus looked to heavens, look to the heavens when he prayed for his disciples, looking to where God may be in our lives. That's important, just as important as bowing. Another way that we can do this is with our hands open. You can have them up like this, palms up. They can be on your laps uh, if you want to rest a little bit. So this symbolizes openness to God. It symbolizes a desire to receive God's spirit. It reminds us of opening our hands to receive God's communion, to be in communion with God, to be in community with God. 
So I'm going to take just a minute right now and I'll lead us through a sitting prayer. Um, you can bow your head or you can look up, but I want to definitely invite you to open your hands with your palms up on your lap, up high. I'm going to put mine up here so you can see them um, as I pray. So would you pray with me? Holy Spirit, fall afresh on me. I receive all that you give to me, equipping me to do the work of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, right here on earth. It is in his name we pray. Amen. So feel free to pause that and pray however you would like, and you can uh, push play whenever you're ready to move on. So we're going to move to the next one. And because I have such a tight space here, I'm not going to do this one. I'm not going to do the rest of them because you wouldn't be able to see me, but you can do it wherever you are. So the next one is standing. Standing is a sign of respect towards God. It's also a reminder that God has invited us to stand before his throne and that we are bold enough to accept that invitation. So when we stand before God, we stand before the throne of God and we say, God, I honor you, I respect you, and I accept this invitation that you've given to me. One of the things that we do when we do prayers of confession in church is I typically ask people to stand, to stand and, and to give themselves boldly to God, to confess their sins, to confess all that wrong that we may have contributed to the world. So this is a, a sign of respect to the Almighty. So the variations that exist for this, there is head and eyes raised towards, towards God, just kind of like I said with the sitting, you can look up when you sit, that's perfectly okay. Um, you don't always have to pray with your eyes closed. I often and typically in worship will pray with my eyes open. If I'm praying on the for you through Zoom or for, through something like this, then I typically keep my eyes open as well. So there, there's no harm with keeping your, our, your eyes open. There's nothing that says you have to close your eyes during a prayer. When we do prayers of confession in church, the words are on the screen and we all say it together. So obviously your eyes have to be open. Um, another way is hands raised towards heaven while you're standing and praying. So Psalm 63, 4 says, I will praise you as long as I live. And in your and, and in your name, I will lift up my hands. So uplifted hands are, are that sign of praise and thanksgiving. Like I said, during worship, you'll see people sometimes with their hands raised. It's not that they're going cuckoo for Jesus, although that's kind of cool, people going cuckoo for Jesus. We are supposed to be in love with Jesus, but it's just really showing that adoration, that praise, that thanksgiving to God. So hands up in the air like that. I often preach with my hands like that, and I even talk here with my hands because it's, it's how we embody the way that we connect with each other and with God also, because God is God is our Father. God is our Creator. This is one of the ways in which we should be connecting with God. So the uh, uh, third prayer position, body prayer, is kneeling. So hear this from Psalm 95, 6. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. So the Bible mentions several people who knelt during prayer. Kneeling is a position of vulnerability. You know, you can't do a whole lot while you are kneeling before like a queen or a king or even before God. You are on your knees. It's a vulnerable position. Kneeling reminds us of our dependence on God. It also reminds us that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is our Lord, and that we are not the Almighty. We have a portion of God in us, of course, but we are not God, and this is a sign of reverence again. So you can do during these prayers any of the things we mentioned mentioned uh, before. You can put your hands on your lap. You can raise them up. You can put your hands in the air. There's all kinds of things that you can do while you're kneeling. It's just a, another way to yeah, show reverence to God. Another one is laying prostrate, prostrate, 
prostrate. Yes, and what that means is that you are laying flat on the ground, face down. So if you ever go to a Catholic ordination, you will see the priest who is being ordained will lay prostrate on, on the ground uh, before the congregation and before God. And this comes from Revelation 7, 11. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever, amen. So laying prostrate on the floor, this is a position that is often associated with great emotion. It can be sorrowful, it can be extreme gratitude, or it could be extreme penitence or repentance, asking for forgiveness. It's most likely that most likely not very comfortable. It's not always the one that we would have you do in worship. Um, some people might feel led to do that, but we don't see it that often. It's usually reserved for those occasions when we're alone or we are committing our lives um, completely and fully to God, as we do say in ordination. So lots of things you can do as well while you're laying on the ground. It's like uh, your hands can be at your sides. You can place your hands straight out. Um, it's just however you feel comfortable because laying on the hard floor is not always comfortable. Uh, the next one is, again, it's my favorite one. It's uh, prayer walks. And I do a lot of prayer walks. It's been a little bit harder for me to do prayer walks in this new neighborhood where it, where Country Club is. There's a lot of really nice houses around here. So I kind of get sidetracked, but uh, I'm starting to get used to them. So I am now uh, doing my prayer walks a little bit better now. But one of the things that prayer walks um, entail is being outside. I mean, you really have to be outside and it entails standing and being firmly connected to the earth and firmly connected to your surroundings, feeling the breeze on your arms, your neck, feeling it through your hair, feeling the rain if you get stuck in the rain. It's all these things. It's taking in every sensation that you get from being outside. And with the walking, what happens with walking is that you can get into a cadence or into a rhythm of, of feeling your prayer, breathing in the prayers, saying the prayers, and just you know, praying for your neighbors. So one of the things that I like to do when I do prayer walks, and I'd love to invite you, I might put some scheduled times up for you to join me in a prayer walk. Maybe next week, instead of this, we'll do a Zoom one and we can walk together wherever it is we are. That could be kind of fun. You can do Zoom through phone. But anyway, so what I do is I will choose a block to walk around and I will look at each house. And as I walk by that house, I ask, I typically ask the same prayer over and over, but you can say whatever prayer is. I will say, God, please move in this person's life, in this family's life. Whoever is living in this house, please move in their life. Open their hearts to know you if they don't already know you. Propel them to attend our church if they don't already attend a church. And what that does for us when we pray these types of prayers is it opens us up to meeting the people in our neighborhoods. So when I meet somebody who comes outside of their front door and I wave from across the sidewalk because of social distancing, very important still, is that I feel like I already know this person. I don't know their names. I don't know how they're, how many people live in their home. But because I've been in communion with God about these people, it makes it easier. So God is working through me and through us when we do prayer walks, equipping us to be ready to meet those who we meet on those prayer walks. So prayer walks is uh, definitely my favorite body of prayer. One, it gets my body moving and it gives me a break from sitting. I do a lot of writing, answering emails and preparing Bible studies, that kind of thing. So um, it's very helpful for me to go out and do prayer walks. So again, I wanna invite you, maybe next week, we, instead of doing this online, we will do a Zoom call, we'll record it and let people see our prayer walk. That actually sounds like a lot of fun. So stay tuned for that. For next week. So the next prayer that I wanted to teach you about today and share with you are breath prayers. Remember, you can pause this at any time. I didn't say that last time. Pause it if you want to work through any of those prayers. 
So breath prayers, great breath prayers. These are things that I do in the morning when I come to church, I want to center myself and to get myself into an attitude of being with God throughout the day. Although I know I'm with God throughout the day, all day, but when I'm here at the church, I, I'm very intentional about it because I want my work to be spirit filled. So we all know breathing is an unconscious thing. When you're born, you start breathing. For the most part, we do know that there are children who are born without breathing. Um, it happens. But for the most part, most of us are born and we take our first breath. And from the moment we're born, this is something that our body instinctively knows how to do. It is unconscious. And breath prayers remind us that just as we can't live on one breath of air, we cannot live on one breath of God. So God is the oxygen for our soul and we need to breathe in God all day long. So when we stop with our breath prayers, we are reminding ourselves of how we are breathing in the presence of God all the time. We are breathing out the presence of God. Because after all, in the beginning, God breathed life into us and Jesus breathed life onto his disciples saying, receive the Holy Spirit. Breath prayers remind us that each breath that we are given is God's gift and that God's spirit is near to us. It's nearer to us than our very breath. This is one of the things I really love to remind people about, that God is nearer than our very breath. Just imagine how close God is to us. It's within the oxygen that is flowing through our bodies. It's just it's a wonderful way to think about the nearness of God. So breath prayers have been practiced in the church for over a millennia. Um, the Easter, Eastern Orthodox Church tends to be a more spiritually oriented type of church. And they in particular have seen breath prayer as a way of living uh, out Paul's instructions to pray without ceasing, ceasing. So we know he says that in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, pray without ceasing ceasing. Make your life a, about prayer. Pray in everything you do. In everything you do, pray in supplication to bring your supplications to the Lord. So most breath prayers, as you're going to notice in just a minute, um, are usually taken from scripture. So I've been sending out these 60 second prayer reminders. And so when I send out the Psalms, and Psalms are a great place to start for breath prayers or for any type of scripture meditation because they are so, so human and so spiritual is that um, a lot of, so a lot of these breath prayers are from scripture and it's the best place to start because they really help you focus on what it is you are doing. So here's what you do. So you pick the phrase that will be your breath prayer or you make one of your own. So this is one of the traditional Orthodox uh, breath prayers. It says, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me, a sinner. Or God, my soul rests in you alone. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Abba, I belong to you. Lord, here I am. So pick one of those phrases. I'm going to pick for this. Uh, come, Holy Spirit, come. I really really like praying to the Holy Spirit. So, uh, because I believe the Holy Spirit is what equips us and releases us for ministry. So you're gonna close your eyes. I'm gonna keep my eyes open, but uh, just so that I can lead you through this and so I can read the scripture or the prayer that I was gonna pray for you. And so you're gonna take in deep breaths, breathing slowly in and slowly out. And then you're gonna whisper the words of the prayer gently or say them in your heart. I like to whisper them, they really help me focus. And then you're going to say the first part as you breathe in and the second part as you breathe out. So, for example, breathe in, breathe out. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come.
And so you continue to pray that prayer over and over as you breathe in and out. Now, it's hard for us, especially in American culture, to sit still for very long. Uh, so I always recommend starting with a minute. So I'm going to do a minute of a breath prayer here. And I'm going to start with, Lord, here I am. So would you breathe, uh, breathe in and out? Would you pray with me, please? Lord, here I am. 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 Amen. So guys, I thank you for joining me today as we practice some body prayers and we did some breath prayers. Definitely invite you into the Zoom call that we have at 10 a.m. every Sunday. You're getting a recording of what it is that we do during those during that time together. So we'll be here next Wednesday as well at 10 o'clock a.m. So next week, I think what we'll do is we're going to try something a little different. So this video will probably be up a little bit later in the day i'll let you know about that and you'll see something on the website if that were to happen but i want to invite you into the zoom time where we will do uh, a prayer walk so it's probably going to be a little bit shorter and um anybody is invited to be there and we will uh, share that later on the website so i thank you everyone for joining me today again we worship here at country club united methodist church at 10 45 every sunday morning and uh, we're a big brick building at 57th and warnell and i would love to see you here if you don't want to make it in person i totally understand it. practicing social distancing is of the utmost importance uh, you can watch us online as well you can watch us on youtube right here on our website or you can watch us on igtv later on or you can watch us on facebook live we've got all these different options for you to connect with with the church so see you 10:45. If you do come in person, wear a mask. Our pews are um, separated. They're not separated. They are socially distanced. So everybody is safe and at least six feet away from each other at all times. So I will see you Sunday. If I don't see you Sunday, I will see you right here next Wednesday as we practice prayer walks. Have a great day. Have a great rest of the week. And may God be with you. Peace, everyone.